Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Wombat Combat by Neo Troy Games. It plays three to six players, takes roughly about 30 minutes to play, and is for ages 10 and up. And in the game Wombat Combat, you are playing as a wombat and you are initiating with combat with other wombats. Your objective is to use the cards in your hand to lay down sets of certain types of wombats. You'll lay down a certain number of 10 wombats, a certain number of 12s, a certain number of fives, and you're going to try and get to a certain number of sets based on the number of players in the game. And when you reach that goal, or if the deck runs out, the game will end. You'll t calculate your points based on how many of each of the different values that you have, and you accumulate them. And if you have the most points based on that, plus any poo you might have in the game, as well as, of course, any wombats you've defeated, plus negative points, then you are the winner. But beware, other players are going to play sets that you have to try and to remove your sets from play. And if they play more cards than you, there your sets are going to go and be just Discarded. Additionally, there's going to be predators that come out that will remove your wombats from play and of course food that will increase the value of the sets you have in play as well. There's immediate, continuous, and end game effects that are going to trigger throughout the game as well as of course the covetous wombat combat where you can score points, steal different cards from players, and of course be able to roll the combat die and utilize the cards in your hand in order to achieve victory and score points throughout the game as well. Let's go ahead and take you into how to play and the setup of the game and then of course course, my review for Wombat Combat. To set up the game of Wombat Combat, the first thing that you will do is you're going to shuffle the Combat slash Wombat cards. Shuffle them out, and then of course, shuffle each of the three other decks and set them aside. The immediate effects, the continuous effects, and the end of game effects. After you do that, you're going to flip over an continuous effect and an end game effect. And these will stay in play unless they get removed by some other of the same type of card coming out. You're also going to deal 10 cards from the Wombat Combat deck to each player. Make sure that they're shuffled and that they're randomized. And then give every single player 10 pieces of poop and any derivatives that you might find necessary. Five and uh, five ones. And of course, one of the player reference cards that explains what you need to do in the game on your turn. And then after that, set the dice aside and anything extra that you're not going to need away and begin play. Playing Wombat Combat is actually very simple. What you're going to do is on your turn, you're going to draw three cards. You'll take them either from the top of the Wombat deck, or you're going to take the first card discarded from the top of the discard, as long as it's a Wombat, and then two cards from the top of the deck. Put them into your hand, and then you're going to take one action. The action can be either to place out a set of at least two cards of a single number. So I can set out three tens, or I can set out five elevens, or I can set out two uh, fours, and you're going to put it in front of you. And that is going to be how you're going to gather sets, which can trigger the end game condition based on the number of players. So in like a four player game, I believe there's like four different types of sets you need to trigger the end. Uh, it will also give you points. So if you place out tens, that's worth 10 poop at the end of the game, which is victory points. And if you place out 12s, that's worth 12 points. Uh, if you do not want to play Wombats or cannot because you don't have at least two of a specific type, then you can go ahead and instead play a food or a predator. Predators, when they come into play, you're going to choose a set of wombats on your opponent's side of the field, or of course your, your own if you'd like, I suppose. And you're going to remove that number of cards based on how much the predator has negative. So a negative two card is going to remove two wombats from one specific set, which will reduce the amount of numbers in a wombat uh, set next to another player. Uh, if you play food, it will increase the number of one of your sets. So if it's a plus one and you have three tens, you're gonna have four tens with that plus one food. The other option, of course, is to attack. Attacking is pretty simple. You'll select three wombats, and you're going to be utilizing the attack symbol on the bottom left-hand side of the card. And from your hand, you'll place them face down. Your opponent will do the same thing, but they are going to choose three cards, and they're going to look at the defense of the bottom left card. In order to attack somebody, they have to have at least seven cards in hand. Once you have chosen to attack, and you've selected your three cards, and so have they, you are then going to utilize the dice. The attacker gets the attacking dice, the defender gets the defense dice. After that, then you're going to go ahead and play any cards you may have for combat. Maybe it's going to be something that gives you a bonus to attacking or making your attacker or defender re-roll a die. Um, and then you're going to tally up the values. You get your attack plus your attack die and any modifiers versus your opponent's attack, your defense, <laughs> defense modifiers and defense dice. And if you have more, you're going to successfully be able to do a whole bunch of stuff. You're going to be able to punish them, kidnap and spare your opponents. So you're gonna give one of the three cards back to them. You will take one of them for yourself. Uh, you are going to make them lose victory points for one of them and you'll get a reward, which is you can take three poof from an opponent if you so 
can if they have at least three poo in their area. And you always start with 10, so most likely that they will. And that is one thing you can do as far as combat goes. Uh, uh, of course, your victor is going to score you points, so you're going to try and do combat. When it's kind of like you can't play a set or you don't want to play a predator, that's going to be a way to generate points. But those are the three main things you're going to do. After that, you're going to finish up by discarding a card from your hand into the discard pile face up. And the next player is going to get a chance to go. They're going to draw their cards. They're going to take one of the three different actions, which is playing down a set of wombats, a food or a predator, or they can choose to cut combat. After which case, discard a card and pass. And you'll keep going up until the point where somebody triggers the end of the game, which is going to be the number of sets in order to win. So for instance, um, if one player has laid five down for a three player game, that will end the game. In a four player game, it's four, and then three, four, five to six player game. And like I said before at the beginning of the video, if this deck of Wombat cards run, runs out, which is highly unlikely, but possible, that will trigger the end of the game as well, and you'll score up all your points, plus any negative points as well. Speaking one more thing about negative points is, when your opponents play down Wombat cards, or you do, there's gonna be a set number. So if I had three tens, your, my opponent could play down four, five, or even six tens. And if they do, they have to play at least one more than mine. Mine are all going to be discarded into a discard pile, which will count as negative points uh, for me at the end of the game. So it'll be a separate area of my board. So there are ways to combat against getting your opponents to, you know, getting to four sets. You don't just simply play four sets and win. What's going to happen is players are going to play the same type of cards in sets, and or same type of cards, but more of them to remove your sets and you will lose them as points. So trying to play as many as you can is important. You just don't want to play two, 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 and two down. Otherwise, that's going to basically allow your opponents to kind of steal the sets that you currently have. And remember, predators will reduce the amount of cards you have. And of course, food will kind of protect your sets from being stolen by the players. But otherwise, that's pretty much the idea of the game. The last little thing to note is when you win combat, you'll be able to roll this die here. And that will change the way the end of game continuous and immediate effects might take place. You'll start with one of the continuous effects, like players end their turn by giving a card to a player of their choice instead of discarding it to the discard pile. And you'll start with an end game effect like this one. If you have an MMA fighter wombat, which is a 20, in your army you'll get an additional five poo from the supply at the end of the game, so five bonus victory points. But if the die gets rolled, and let's say that a K gets rolled, which is the end of game, you're going to flip over a new end of game and replace the old one. And the same is said for continuous. However, if it's the red one here, then you're going to go ahead and flip over an immediate, you'll resolve this effect, discard it, and continue gameplay. Otherwise, that's Wombat Combat. Wombat Combat at its core is a set collection game. You're trying to collect as much of a set as you can, play it down in front of you, and score points at the end of the game after somebody has reached that threshold of how many different sets they need to complete in front of them. And if you have more points in your pool, as well as negative points are not as low as somebody else's and victory points as far as your fighters scoring points, then you're going to win the game. Uh, and there's tons of cards to help you with that, whether it be just simply a 20 Wombat or a 12 Wombat or an 8. And each of the numbers are going to be based on how many are in the deck, so the more wombats there are, the harder it is to keep the set, the more points they are worth. A very smart idea indeed. You have cards like Counterattack, it's whenever a predator is played against you, you can tame the predator and play it right back against the opponent, so you have certain actions that are going to be played out of turn. The food cards are really nice, it kind of protects you, but it's kind of a one-time thing on your turn, you don't get to play a set, so it's kind of, you want to use this to make sure you can protect a very important set of wombats. Or you can add plus two power during your combat. You can add three power to your combat. You can copy an attack of the highest attack or defense power in the group of wombat combats on a turn, which can kind of keep, keep you guys in equal playing fields. And then of course, when you play wombats down, there's gonna be some of them that have a unique icon on the top left-hand side, right underneath the number. And that icon is gonna give you a benefit. And for each wombat you place, when you place a set down, you can use that ability once. Uh, and they range in different things. You can take uh, cards from a discard pile into your hand. You can draw the top card of a pile and add it to your hand. You can discard a card from another player's army, etc., etc. And it's all explained on the back of this booklet here to show you the different types of abilities that take place when playing down the wombats. Now, this game is a pretty straightforward game. Think of like exploding kittens and think of like a basic ta tableau management game, but it adds a couple unique little twists to it, one of them being the combat and, of course, the different types of effects that are going to be taking place in game. Combat is something that you do when you have cards 
in hand but can't play sets and don't want to play predators or food, it's a way for you to score three victory points, make your opponent lose points, and then have an effect that might help you or change an effect of a game that you do not like. Maybe you don't want to have to deal with the weakest player, a total amount of poo gets an extra 10 poo. Maybe you want it to be the highest player because you are currently winning the game. So we're going to hopefully try and do combat, roll the die, get that gaming ending condition and be able to change your, your fate of making somebody else score more points at the end. Or continuous effects. You don't like a continuous effect that is currently out and being played. It's something that helps your opponents and doesn't help you. That can be a useful thing as well in combat. So combat can score you a net chunk of points and surprisingly it was used quite a bit throughout the game. I mean it's, it's a highly aggressive style ta tableau management game. Uh, most importantly is always going to be placing down your wombats, making sure that you secure them and make sure that they do not get removed by other players playing down more wombats. Knowing how many wombats are in the deck, in the discard pile, and in your hand is going to be a benefit. If you know that 12 of the 20s have been played and there's a 5 out, it's very unlikely you're going to be, uh, there's 5 of them out, you know that it's very unlikely for you to be able to get that set. So you'll want to discard those cards or use them for combat or defense when you need to as opposed to trying to use them for your tableau. It's a little bit of a card counting thing but not too complex and not too important as far as like if you don't count cards you cannot win but it has some strategy and some thought processes that you do not think are going to be incorporated into a game like this and uh, usually that's fine but I just like the idea of that added additional strategy that you can kind of play with either adults or even the kids can kind of ignore all those little things and just play the game as it is. The artwork is super cute. It looks great. It feels great. It's vivid. It's colorful. You see a bunch of wombats doing a bunch of combat with different types of nunchucks and uh, chairs and uh, swords and all kinds of weird things. This has got a, a big wombat trying to throw a tree at you. <laughs> this karate kick reminds me of Chung Li from Street Fighter and so on and so forth. Uh, using the cute little poo as victory points or kind of moving poo around back and forth when you're doing combat. This is kind of like your life essence. It's also going to be your victory points at the end of the game in addition to your wombats and any combat that you're going to be taking place and gaining victory points or losing victory points or if somebody's taking your tableau of three tens and put four tens out, you'll lose those three cards and you'll score negative points for each one of them. Uh, so poo's important in the game. Uh, one little thing I wish that the game kind of did more with was the utiliz utilizing the poo. Most of it is not going to be used throughout the game other than in combat. Most of the time it's just going to be used at the end of the game to when you add up your score. But I would like to have seen more of that used because it was a lot of fun. I think that's what drew a lot of people in uh, for my group when they want to play this game. It's like, oh, they're going to be using poo a lot. And it just wasn't used all that much. For me, it wasn't a bigger deal but for them they were kind of disappointed that it wasn't more of a thing. Uh, the combat is a little random but also has mitigation and choice and different cards that you can utilize. There's a ton of different action cards in the game that change your fate and I don't remember anything about losing a turn or whatnot but if there is any lose a turn cards in this game I'm going to say they should get rid of those uh, or gain a turn. I, I don't like those type of cards. I can't remember if this one specifically has it but I know a lot of games typically like this do so I'll check the cards if that's important to you because I always do. I always just chuck the cards if they have those. Um, but for the most part, all of the cards that are utilized as far as attacking and combat are a lot of fun. And they change the game, but not in too advanced or like uh, too powerful ways. There wasn't a lot of overpowered cards I saw in here, other than kind of like the predator that kind of like you can counterattack a predator. But that's okay because they're choosing to try and hurt you. And that's kind of like a risk that they take for trying to remove the cards in front of you. Overall, high quality, well thought out, cute kid game, family game. It's probably not a game for like a still extreme heavy gamers. So this is what I would consider a light game with a nice simple twist about the combat and utilizing the different cards and there being a lot of end game and, and continuous and uh, immediate effects to take place, which is the bread and butter for these type of games, making it feel different every time you play. For those of you who like those type of games and have families who are interested in playing something with a little bit of cute fun art and a little bit of wombat combat, this is something I suggest you take a look at, which is currently on Kickstarter. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Wombat Combat. If you're interested in picking up the game, there is a link down below in the description where you can find it on Kickstarter. You can also go ahead and check out our website on filtergamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification button, see more videos that we produce like this every single day, Monday through Friday. You can also check out our live stream, which is every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, where we play games just like this one on stream. You can watch us play it, see our reactions, and decide if it's a game that you and your group would be interested in playing. It's the best way, in my opinion, to decide if a game is for you over my own opinion. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I look forward to throwing some poo at you in Wombat Combat next time.